Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. Just a short video today, I'm going to cover the whole issue of nerd fonts. What the heck are nerd fonts? How do you use them and where do you get them from? See you after the intro. Okay guys, just giving it a bit of a warm up. It shouldn't be long now, another week or so. Um, before I start, can I just say, um, I know that uh, I've mentioned I've had a, a bit of a throat virus. Uh, it's definitely on the mend, but I'd like to thank everyone who uh, sent their well wishes in the comments. So today, this is just quite a short video for me. I thought I'd talk about the whole nerd font thing. It's probably only going to be relevant to those who have uh, had a go at playing with their own window manager. But if you've done that, it's not going to be long before you start thinking about how to make the bar on your window manager a little prettier. Are you going to use emoji or are you going to use something like font awesome to bring in the little icons just to make things look a little bit more special? Font Awesome is, of course, the main font that we've all tended to use in the past. And on the whole, it's pretty good. How do you actually go about, though, taking the fonts that are embedded in Font Awesome and adding them to your bar? Well, let me show a couple of ways that you can actually do that. And then we'll move on and look at nerd fonts. So... Obviously, you're going to have to install the font first. So let's assume you've installed Font Awesome from your package manager. How are you actually going to get at those little glyphs to be able to copy them and paste them into, I don't know, your configuration, such as your polybar configuration, or into a script? Well, one of the things that many people use is a character map. And what you see in front of you is the GNOME character map application. Now, this is pretty good, although I'm no great fan of GNOME. I think the GNOME character map is probably my favourite, although the KDE character map application is also very usable. What you're going to need to do is firstly select your font, and then on the left-hand side, you're going to need to select the area that is labelled the private use area. Not all font applications give you access to the private use area, but it's absolutely essential if you want to get access to the sort of glyphs that you see here. And it's actually pretty easy. You simply select the uh, particular font that you want, double click it, and it actually puts it in here at the bottom. And that's the text for you to copy. So you simply copy that glyph there. You then move over to whatever application that you want to put these in or whatever script you want to put these in. And if I move over to, say, my polybar config, in the module sections, uh, we actually have a heading for most of these modules called format prefix. And although it's very small here, you can see I have pasted in the various different fonts. And these are the fonts that you see here on my bar that are showing up. So they show up very small in the actual configuration file itself, but when they actually show up on the bar, they're looking good. Now, just switching back to the web browser here, another way that you can actually identify which uh, image you want, do we call them a image or a Unicode icon? I'm not sure what the correct word is, but little images is you can go to the font awesome cheat sheet and you can see here it's split up into three different types on the font awesome five uh, font, solid, regular, and brands. And 
it's the same sort of principle as you would use with the character maps. You would simply copy and paste these icons directly from the web page into your script or into your configuration file. And for many, many years, this is what I've tended to do. So all good. Uh, font Awesome is an incredible iconic font. And for people like me who like decorating their window manager bars, it's brilliant. You can, of course, uh, use these iconic fonts in the likes of HTML pages as well. And you can use them with CSS. Not something I tend to do. I'm just looking at decoration for my window manager bars. The problem that I've had over the years is when I've used the Font Awesome Cheat Sheet, I found that some of the fonts or some of the icons, when I've tried to copy and paste them, um, they don't render for some reason. And there are a range of different reasons for that. Part of it could be due to not having the correct version of Font Awesome installed. A second reason could be because you have another iconic font installed and there's some sort of clash perhaps happening. And Font Awesome does a paid for version as well. And some of the icons are only going to be available in the paid for version. There's also, and it's not so much an issue, it's, it's, it's more a convenience thing. You may not just want the icons that are in Font Awesome. You may want icons, power line icons, for instance, or some other font with a subset of icons to use on your bar. So is there an easier way than Font Awesome? Well, I think there is. And this is what we call the Nerd Fonts Collection. So going back to the browser now, what you should see, I've, I've basically opened up a web, web page called nerdfonts.com. And this contains uh, details about how you can patch any font that you want, basically, with a range of different icons, including the Font Awesome icons. But it also contains pre-patched fonts. Now, the fonts that are pre-patched, it refers to here as developer fonts. Developer fonts is just a fancy term for the sort of fonts that you're going to use, perhaps uh, on your header bar, uh, in your terminal, that sort of thing. I think nerd fonts is probably a poor name because it would tend to put people off. But essentially what it does is it takes a whole range of different fonts and it patches them with icons from other popular iconic fonts and as you can see here on the nerd fonts page it tells you exactly what's included in the patch fonts so it's got 675 icons from font awesome so essentially if you have this you don't really need font awesome installed as well 170 font awesome extension icons 197 devicons 228 weather icons, etc., etc., and 2,119 material design icons. So loads of icons to choose from. So patched fonts are simply a font that has all of these little icons, um, Unicode glyphs, or whatever you want to call them, patched into them. And if you go down this page, it tells you all about the different icon sets. More importantly, though, though it gives, gives you instructions about how you can patch your own fonts if you want, I'm more concerned with the downloads page. Now, depending upon what uh, distro you're on, you might find that some of these patched nerd fonts are already in your repo. Certainly, if you're using Arch, you will find in the AUR that there's a good selection of nerd fonts that are already there. And there's also a complete set of nerd fonts in the AUR. I wouldn't personally recommend that you download the full set uh, simply because it's about two gig in size. So it's pretty big. Um, but simply go to the downloads page if it's not in your repo and choose the font that you like. 
So I'm just going to scroll through, and you can see there's loads here. You know, Deja Vu, Son Mon Sons Mono, Nerd Fonts, um, Hack Nerd Fonts, Inconsolata, JetBrains Mono, and so on and so forth. Uh, I know Source Code Pro Nerd Font is something many people use. I personally use the Ubuntu Mono Nerd Font. I quite like the characters uh, that it shows up in my terminal. I like the shape of them. And as it's a Nerd Font, it's going to have all the icons pre-patched into it. How do you install these? Well, you simply download them and unzip them. Where you would then put them will very much depend on your uh, distro. Certainly with Slackware, it's just a case of putting them in USR share fonts. With Arch, um, it's a little bit different. Uh, they tell you to avoid USR, USR share fonts because that's the directory that the package manager actually manages. So they suggest USR local share fonts. Or if you don't want to go system-wide and you just want to install it for a single user, uh, .local share fonts. So you drop the uncompressed uh, TTF font file in there and you do an FC cache. Uh, you may need to log out and log back in and you should be able to find the fonts that you've got. Of course, you're still going to have to pick the particular picture or icon that you want to use. And again, you can use the, uh, the character map applications in order to do that by going to the private use area. But nerd fonts also provide a very useful cheat sheet. And you can see this in my browser page here. And it's simply nerdfonts.com forward slash cheat dash sheet. And uh, it lists a few icons there already. You can see them. Uh, and you can search for an icon. So if I wanted to search for, I don't know, a thermometer. I've only typed therm. And you can see all the various icons here for thermometer. And as you hover over each of them, it gives you the option of what, what you want to copy. So for me, I'm just going to copy the icon and then paste it directly into my script or my uh, configuration file. But you can also uh, copy the class name if you want, or indeed the hex code. And it does give you some examples at the bottom of how to, for example, use CSS, how to, to paste it into CSS. I just tend to copy the icon and throw it into that. So all good. But simply pasting that into your config file or into your script isn't necessarily going to allow that icon to show up. What you would normally have to do is you would need to declare it. And so going back to my uh, polybar config, let's go to the bar. Where we looked before, you can see that I actually have Ubuntu Mono Nerd font declared there. I've actually commented out the font awesome. I was previously using font awesome, but, but I've switched over almost completely to uh, the nerd fonts now, and it seems to be working quite well for me. The issue that you may wonder about, though, is what is the name of the font that you actually paste in? I mean, Ubuntu Mono, Space Nerd, Space Font, with a capital U and a, a capital M. Where do you find out the format in which it should actually be stated within your config files? Well, that's actually surprisingly easy. You have a command called fc-list, and I'm just piping it into grep and uh, searching for Ubuntu Mono to see what's on my system. And if I look for that, you can see that Ubuntu Mono Nerd font comes up, and there's my Ubuntu Mono Nerd font complete TTF. And there you can see on this second section, it tells me exactly how I should be stating the name of that font in my configuration file. All dead easy. Let's have a chat. Right, so that's nerd fonts and how to use them. A very quick video, just a little bit of a how-to, 
and uh, I hope you found it useful. Guys, that's it for next this week. I will see you next week. We're going to see how the weather pans out as to whether or not that's going to continue or whether I need to take a break to get the bike out properly. I know I'm a fair weather rider. I, I don't deny that at all. I'm just waiting until we get a bit of decent weather and uh, avoid the wet roads because I don't want to be having any accidents. So I'll see you next week, guys. Once again, thanks very much uh, for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to support me on uh, uh, Patreon, please do. Like these wonderful people that you can see in the background here. But that's it for today. Have a great weekend. Cheers.